Southeastern Asia. I just finished earlier this afternoon a video series in French about the answers that the true friends of the Jews, defenders of the Jews, should give to the Holocaust deniers, or to be more precise, to the Holocaust, Holocaust deniers and the Holocaust belittlers. The Holocaust deniers basically declare that no massive systematic murder of Jews through various methods in Europe, resulting in the deaths of some six million Jews, uh, and the perpetrators were <clears throat> Nazi German soldiers, concentration camp guards, medical doctors, nurses, <clears throat> and their allies and collaborators from various European nations, that no such murder took place. The Holocaust belligerents do agree <clears throat> that on a minor scale it took place, but there were no more than maybe a couple of million victims. Although once in the 1990s, a prominent Holocaust uh, denier or belittler, the British amateur historian and writer, originally journalist David Irving, did blurt out in one statement that, in his opinion, four million Jews were killed. So the purpose of this series now in English is to help you. Hopefully there will be many of you tuning in, <clears throat> fellow teachers of social sciences, including world history, and students and other people of any age group who are interested in knowing how to counter these often distorted and biased and often downright false statements and questions made by the Holocaust deniers. One common denominator is that they seek to belittle uh, the murder of six million European Jews, either by claiming that it never took place or and that there were only at most maybe a couple of million victims or more likely hundreds of thousands and <clears throat> they then died of various diseases such as typhus <clears throat> that supposedly there were a lot fewer gas chambers than previously taught and that's why many holocaust deniers actually call themselves historical revisionists that's a euphemism for holocaust denial in this <clears throat> case and since there are so many far-right and populist uh, right-wing parties that are strongly anti-immigration, especially anti-African and Asian immigration, anti-Muslim immigration, in some cases even anti-Jewish immigration, especially in Europe, but not exclusively there. It's worthwhile that we examine these issues and then do what we can to promote tolerance and even love among the ethnic and racial and religious groups. And above all, <clears throat> to pray for and bless our fellow human beings as Lord Jesus Christ taught us to do. So <clears throat> here's that starting point. I come from Finland, Northern Europe originally, but I lived, uh, including my long holidays, summer holidays in Finland, in Canada, for six years from 1987 to 1993 and since november 2014 i have been living here in metro manila <clears throat> the philippines actually even in the same city so one what proof exists that the nazis practiced genocide or deliberately killed six million jews the international historical review institute or institute for historical review sorry falsely claims none. The only evidence is the post-war testimony of individual survivors, in quotation marks. This testimony is contradictory and no survivor claims to have actually witnessed any gassing. There are no contemporaneous <clears throat> documents and no hard evidence <clears throat> whatsoever. No mounds of ashes, no crematoria capable of disposing of millions of corpses, no piles of clothes, no human soap, no lampshades made of human skin, no records, no credible demographic statistics. Nizkor replies, <clears throat> lie piled upon lie with not a shred of proof. This is as good a place as any to present some detailed evidence, which is consistently ignored as a sort of primer on Holocaust denial. <clears throat> it will make this reply much longer than the other 65, but perhaps the reader will understand the necessity for this. Let's look at their claims one at a time. 
supposedly the only evidence the post-war testimony of individual survivors. First of all, consider the implicit conspiracy theory. Notice how the testimony of every single inmate of every Nazi camp is automatically dismissed as unconvincing. This total dismissal of inmates' testimony, along with the equally total dismissal of the Nazis' own testimony, of course, the uh, claim is made by the Holocaust deniers that uh, the Allies, Allies uh, soldiers, such as Americans, uh, Britons, French, and Soviets, supposedly extorted, extracted those confessions through torture, which is not true, is the largest unspoken assumption of Holocaust denial. This assumption, <clears throat> which is not often spelled out, is that the attempted Jewish genocide never took place, but rather that a secret conspiracy of Jews, starting around 1941, planted and forged myriad documents to prove that it did. Then after World War II, they rounded up all the camp survivors and told them what to say. But we find <clears throat> very interesting and horrible uh, quotes which do prove that the Nazis had or the Nazi leaders had a systematic plan for killing most European Jews. The Nazi German Minister for Propaganda and Public Enlightenment, Mr. Josef Goebbels, <clears throat> kept a detailed diary. And there are several telling entries. <clears throat> Let's look at just two of them. February the 14th, 1942, the Führer, meaning the Nazi German dictator Adolf Hitler, once again ex expressed his determination to clean up the Jews in Europe pitilessly. There must be no squeamish sentimentalism about it. So Hitler definitely was going with the flow and indeed directing it. He, of course, left the details to his um, assistants, his servants. The Jews have deserved the catastrophe that has now overtaken them. Their destruction will go hand in hand with the destruction of our enemies. We must hasten this process with cold ruthlessness. March the 27th, 1942. The procedure is a pretty barbaric one and not to be described here more definitely. Not much will remain of the Jews. On the whole, it can be said that about 60% of them will have to be liquidated, whereas only 40% can be used for forced labor. Forced labor. Michael Shermer has pointed out that the Nazis' own estimate of the number of European Jews was 11 million, and 60% of 11 million is 6.6 .6 million, which is fairly close to the actual figure. So it can be said that the Nazi Germans and their collaborators almost accomplished their goal. Actually, 40% was a serious overestimate of the survival rate of Jews who were captured but there were many Jews who escaped, <clears throat> going to such neutral countries as Sweden, and in some cases, Switzerland. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Some lucky few were able to escape to uh, Britain, Ireland, Canada, the United States, Australia, and New Zealand, but that was rare. <laughs> because most of those countries basically closed their doors to Jewish immigration by 1938-1939, at a time when many European Jews would have wanted to escape and would have needed to escape. As even the revisionist David Cole has admitted, revisionists have yet to provide a satisfactory explanation of this document. <coughs> Hundreds of former Nazis testified regarding the Holocaust in trials dating from late 1945, when the most famous of these trials, the Nuremberg uh, trials, began until the 1960s. And many of these Nazis testified as witnesses and were not accused of crimes. What was the basis for their supposed coercion? Many of these trials even happened in Germany or West Germany. What coercion could have forced Judge Konrad Morgen to testify to the crimes he witnessed at the International Nuremberg Trial in 1946, where he was not accused of any crime, and to later testify at the Auschwitz trial in Frankfurt, West Germany, from 1963 to 1965? What coercion was applied to SS Dr. Johann Kremer to make him testify in his own defense in 1947, and then after being <coughs> having been convicted 
in both Poland and Germany emerge after he's released to testify again as a witness at the Frankfurt trial. What coercion was applied to Böck, Gerhard Hess, Hölblinger, Storch, and Wiebeck, all former SS men, all witnesses in Frankfurt, none accused of any crime there. Holocaust deniers point to small discrepancies in testimonies to try to discredit them. <clears throat> and this is a usual tactic among them. They try uh, to be like uh, muckrakers of sorts. <clears throat> they try to blow these small discrepancies and yes, even lies or misstatements of fact or misleading statements uh, that here uh, pop up here and there. <clears throat> As later in this video series, we'll say uh, some or several or many Holocaust deniers have made a lot <clears throat> of the fact that the Austrian Jewish um, Nazi criminal hunter Simon Wiesenthal did admit in 1975 that there were <clears throat> no extermination camps in Germany, but he probably meant uh, Germany within its borders after. <clears throat> the Second World War. But this, of course, does not deny the fact that, uh, especially in what is now Poland, there were many concentration camps, including six in extermination camps. The assumption unstated is that the reader will accept minor discrepancies as evidence of a vast overreaching Jewish conspiracy, which is clearly ludicrous. <clears throat> then in 1981, so 36 years after the Second World War had ended in Europe and Asia, Dr. Hans Münch gave an interview and talked about Auschwitz. The interviewer asked him, isn't the ideology of extermination contrary to a doctor's ethical values? Münch replied, yes, absolutely. There is no discussion, but I lived in that environment and I tried in every possible way to avoid accepting it I had, but I had to live with it. What else could I have done? And I wasn't confronted with it directly until the order came that I and my superior and another one had to take part in the exterminations since the camp's doctors were overloaded and couldn't cope with it. <coughs> Interviewer, I must ask something. Doubters claim that special treatment could mean anything. It didn't have to be extermination. Münch, special treatment in the terminology of the concentration camp means physical extermination. If it was a question of more than a few people where nothing else than gassing them was worthwhile, they were gassed. Interviewer, special treatment was gassing? Munch, yes, absolutely. <coughs> and then the former SS Unterscharführer Franz Zuhommel uh, was persuaded to give an interview for the film Shoah. Shoah is uh, the generally used Jewish name for the Holocaust. Speaking under false promises of anonymity, he told of the crimes committed at the uh, Treblinka death camp in Poland from the book Shoah, published by uh, the French uh, Jewish filmmaker and writer Claude Lanzmann uh, in 1985, page 54. Interviewer, you are a very important eyewitness, and you can explain what Treblinka was. Zuhomel but don't use my name, interviewer. No, I promised. All right, you've arrived at Treblinka. Zuhomel, uh, so Stadi, the Sarge, or Sergeant, uh, showed us the camps from end to end. Just as we went by, they were opening the gas chamber doors and people fell out like potatoes. Naturally, that horrified and appalled us. We went back and sat down on our suitcases and cried like old women. <coughs> Each day, 100 Jews were chosen to drag the corpses to the mass graves. In the evening, the Ukrainians drove those Jews into the gas chambers or shot them every day. Ask the deniers why they shrug off the testimony of Hans Zuhomel. Greg Raven, a well-known American Holocaust denier, will tell you that it is not evidence. Bring me some evidence, please. Others will tell you that Zuhomel and Munch were crazy or hallucinating or fantasizing. At best, the denial literature makes veiled references to the World Jewish Congress perpetuating a hoax in Butts 1976. No details are provided. Yet the entire case of Holocaust denial rests on this supposed conspiracy. 
those who were propped against the door, uh, and this quote comes from uh, Heitlinger, the final solution, page 154. Um, and from the testimony of Polish officer, Mr. Zenon Rozanski, about the first homicide or gassing in Auschwitz, where 850 Soviet prisoners of war were gassed to death. Those were, who were propped up against the door leaned with a curious stiffness and then fell right at our feet, striking their faces hard against the concrete floor. Corpses. Corpses standing bolt upright and filling the entire corridor of the bunker till they were packed so tight that it was impossible for more to fall. <coughs> Which of the revisionists will deny this? Which of them was there? Which of them has the authority to tell Rozanski what he did or did not see? The statement that no survivor claims <clears throat> to have actually witnessed any gassing is clearly false. This was changed to few survivors in later versions, which is closer to the truth. <clears throat> the normal capacity of the vans is nine to 10 per square meter. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this is from a letter written by, or from the letter written by one Mr. Just <clears throat> about the gas fans to Hauf on June the 5th, 1942, in a letter marked both top secret and only copy. Since December 1941, for example, 97,000 were processed in other words, killed, gassed to death using three vans without any faults occurring in the vehicles. The normal capacity of the vans is nine to 10 per square meter. The capacity of the larger special Zauha vans is not so great. It would appear that a reduction in the cargo area is necessary. The problem cannot be solved by merely reducing the number of subject or subjects treated as has been done so far. Greater protection is needed for the lighting system. <clears throat> Slip-ups occurred in written correspondence regarding the gas chambers themselves, some of which fortunately escaped destruction and were found after the war. A memo written by to SS man Karl Bischoff on November the 27th, 1942, uh, describes the gas chamber in Chema 2 in Auschwitz-Birkenau, not with the usual Monday name of Leichenkeller, but rather as the Zonderkeller, or special cellar, or basement. And two months later, on January the 29th, 1943, Bischoff wrote a memo to Kamler referring to that same chamber as the Vergasungskeller, or gassing cellar, an underground gas chamber. <coughs> <coughs> Holocaust deniers turn to Arthur Butz or Butz, uh, spelled B U T Z, who provides a special explanation for the Vergasungskeller. Vergasung, he says, cannot refer to killing people with gas, but only to the process of converting a solid or liquid gas. Therefore, he says the Vergasungskeller must have been a special room where the fuel <clears throat> for the Auschwitz ovens was converted into gas, a gasification cellar. But there are three problems with this explanation. First, Vergasung certainly can refer to killing people with gas. Butz doesn't speak any German, and he should not try to lecture about the language. Second, there is no room that could possibly serve this function which Butz describes. Years after writing his book, he admitted this and helplessly suggested that there might be another building somewhere in the camp that might house a gasification cellar. <coughs> Third, the type of oven used at Auschwitz did not require any gasification process. The ovens burned solid fuel. Why would morgues have urgently needed peepholes made out of a double layer of a third of an inch thick glass? The question of whether it can be proved that the cyanide gas was used in the Auschwitz gas chambers has intrigued the deniers. Their much heralded Leuchter report, for example, expends a great deal of effort on the question of whether traces of cyanide residue remain there today. But we do not need to look for chemical traces to confirm cyanide use. Gottman cited above, page 229. 
Letters and telegrams exchanged on February the 11th and 12th, 1943, between the Zentral Bauleitung and the top mention a wooden blower for Leichenkeller 1. This reference confirms the use of the morgue as a gas chamber. <clears throat> Bischoff and Prüfer thought that the extraction of air mixed with concentration, concentrated prussic acid cyanide, 20 grams per cubic meter, required a non-corroding ventilator. <clears throat> Other capture documents, even if they don't refer directly to some part of the extermination process, refer to it by implication. A captured memo of the SS Brigade Brigade Führer or Brigade Leader Kamler reveals that the expected incineration capacity of the Auschwitz ovens was a combined total of 4,756 corpses per day. Finally, apart from the abundant testimonies, confessions, and physical evidence of the extermination process, there is certainly no want or lack of evidence of the Nazis' intentions and plans. <clears throat> Here are just a few examples. Uh, the diary of Hans Frank, who was the brutal and autocratic regional leader in the Nazi-occupied Poland for most of the Second World War, <clears throat> and then did express repentance, albeit qualified repentance, claiming that so many German civilians had been killed by the advancing Allied, especially Soviet soldiers, that this supposedly uh, made uh, the Nazi genocide of Jews, millions of Jews, uh, more tolerable or smaller. From Nazi Conspiracy and Aggression, 1946, Volume 1, pages 992 and 994. <clears throat> but what should be done with the Jews? Do you think that they will be settled down in, or they will be settled down in the Ostland or Eastern territories in resettlement villages? This is what we were told in Berlin. Why all this bother? We can do nothing with them either in the Ostland or nor in the Reich Commissariat. So liquidate them yourself. Gentlemen, I must ask you to rid yourself of all feeling of pity. We must annihilate the Jews wherever we find them and wherever it is possible in order to maintain the structure of the Reich, meaning Nazi Germany as a whole. We cannot shoot or poison these 3,500,000 Jews, but we shall nevertheless be able to take measures which will lead somehow to their annihilation. There were about three and a half million Jews living in Poland at the time of the German and Soviet invasions in September 1939, or about 10% of the Polish population. That we sentence 1,200,000 Jews to die of hunger should be noted only marginally. Well, this definitely reminds me of the former French <coughs> far right leader Jean Marie Le Pen's claim earlier this century that uh, the Holocaust is a detail of history. And his uh, daughter, Marine Le Pen, during her third uh, presidential campaign in 2017, had the audacity to claim that France as a nation supposedly was not responsible for the uh, roundup or arrest of, was it over 10,000 or over 15,000 French Jews in the Velodrome d'Hiver or Winter Velodrome uh, or Cycling uh, Stadium and then and their transportation to these death camps, but only specific people were responsible. And uh, inconsistently and hypocritically, Miss Le Pen claims to be a great friend of Israel. <clears throat> Himmler's speech, Heinrich Himmler, was the leader of the SS uh, military organization in Germ Nazi Germany. Speech in Posen, or now Poznan, Poland, on October the 4th, 1943, was captured on audio tape. Trial of the Major War Criminals, 1948, volume uh, 29, page 145, translated by the current author. I refer now to the evacuation of the Jews, the extermination of the Jewish people. This is one of those things that is easily said. The Jewish people are being exterminated, says every party, meaning Nazi party member. Quite true, it's part of our plans. The elimination of the Jews' extermination, we are doing it. The extermination effort was even mentioned in at least one official Nazi court verdict. In May 1943, a Munich court wrote in its decision against SS Untersturmführer Max Taubner that 
the accused shall not be punished because of the actions against the Jews as such. The Jews have to be exterminated, and none of the Jews that were killed is any great loss. So they were, in their minds, dehumanizing Jews. Well, according to the Nazi racist ideology, for example, Jews, Slavs, uh, Romas or Gypsies, <clears throat> and Black Africans were so-called subhumans and indigenous people as well. <clears throat> And Hitler spoke quite clearly in public on no fewer than three occasions. Seven months before Germany unleashed the battles of Second World War in Europe by invading Poland, on January the 30th, 1939, he spoke publicly to the Nazi German parliament, Reichstag, transcribed from Skeptic Magazine, Volume 2, Number 4, page 50. Today I want to be a prophet once more. If international finance, jewelry, inside and outside of Europe, should succeed once more in plunging nations into another world war. <clears throat> the consequence will not be the Bolshevization of the earth, and therefore, uh, thereby the victory of Jewry, but the annihilation or destruction of the Jewish race in Europe. In September 1942, if Jewry should plot another world war in order to exterminate the Aryan peoples in Europe, it would not be the Aryan people which would be exterminated, but Jewry. Aryan people meaning Germanic people, <clears throat> like Germans themselves, Austrians, um, Dutch people, Danes, um, Swedes, Norwegians, Icelanders, and so forth. On November the 8th, 1942, you will recall the session of the Reichstag during which I declared if Jewry should imagine that it could bring about an international world war to exterminate the European races, the result will not be the extermination of the European races, but the extermination of Jewry in Europe. People always laughed about me as a prophet. Of those who laughed then, countless numbers no longer laugh today, and those who still laugh now will perhaps no longer laugh a short time from now. <coughs> No Mount Ashes is an internal contradiction. In an article in the journal published by the same Institute for Historical Review that publishes these questions and answers, the journal's editor reported that a Polish commission in 1946, so the year after the Second World War had ended, found human ash in the Treblinka death camp to a depth of over 20 feet, meaning over six meters. This article is available on Greg Raven's website, and Greg Raven is a prominent Holocaust denier. <clears throat> Apparently, some survivors claimed that the corpses were always thoroughly cremated. Because uncremated human remains were mixed with the ash, the editor suggested that the testimonies were false. Amazingly, <clears throat> he had no comment on how a 20-foot layer of human ashes came to be there in the first place. Perhaps he felt that to be unworthy of mention. There are also piles of ashes in Majdanek, one of the six extermination camps in Poland. In Auschwitz-Birkenau, ashes from cremated corpses were dumped into the rivers and swamps <clears throat> surrounding the camp and used as fertilizer for nearby farmers' fields. No crematoria capable of disposing of millions of corpses, absolutely false. The crematoria were more than capable of the job according to both the Nazis' own internal memos and the testimony of survivors. This is discussed in much detail in the replies to questions 42 and 45. No piles of clothes. Apparently, the Institute for Historical Review considers piles of clothes to be hard evidence. This is strange because they do not deny the other sorts of piles found <clears throat> in Nazi camps. Piles of eyeglasses, piles of shoes in Auschwitz, Bilgetz, and Majdanek, piles of gold teeth, piles of burnt corpses, piles of unburnt corpses, piles of artificial limbs, piles of human hair, piles of ransacked luggage, piles of shaving brushes, piles of combs, piles of pots and pans, and yes, even the piles of clothes that the Institute for Historical Review claims do not exist. Perhaps the authors of the 66 questions and answers realized that it was dangerous for them to admit that these piles were hard evidence, <clears throat> because then they would also be forced to admit a number of other things as hard evidence. 
Perhaps this is why they removed this phrase from the revised 66 questions and answers. And in numerous uh, six, uh, questions and answers among these 66 ones, uh, as the author of these uh, articles points out, the Institute for Historical Review has revised the claims, has changed certain or, uh, words and expressions, has left certain words and expressions out, has, for example, either downgraded or then upgraded certain figures. Manipulation. <clears throat> If items were not generally found in mass quantities, it is only because the Nazis distributed them to the German population. A memo on this was captured, revealing that they even redistributed women's underwear. No human soap. This is true, but misleading. Though there is some evidence that soap was made from corpses on a very limited experimental scale, one of the pseudo-scientific <clears throat> experiments that were made. For example, uh, by Dr. Josef Mengele, also nicknamed the Doctor of Death, uh, who managed to escape from Europe after the Second World War, making his way first to Argentina, then to Paraguay, and finally to Brazil, where he uh, drowned after suffering a stroke while swimming in 1979. <clears throat> Adolf Eichmann, incidentally, was not so lucky. A few Mossad agents, uh, Mossad is the Israeli army's secret service in in essence, an espionage organization <clears throat> were able to capture him in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, <clears throat> in 1960, and he was transported to Israel and there tried and found guilty of crimes against the humanity, more specifically of being responsible for ordering many Jews to go to their deaths, and then he was hanged in 1962. <clears throat> where introduces evidence in both trials of Ilse Koch, one of the uh, brutal Nazi German women serving as concentration camp guards, and were shown to a U.S. Senate investigation committee in the late 1940s. We know they were made of human skin because they bore tattoos and because a microscopic forensic analysis of the items was performed. <clears throat> a detailed page on this is being prepared. No records. This is nonsense. True extermination by gassing was always referred to with cold words, and those victims who arrived to death camps only to be immediately gassed were not recorded in any books. But there are slip-ups in the cold word usage that reveal the true meanings as already described. No credible demographic statistics. <clears throat> this is the second internal contradiction, see question 2 and question 15. The British-American committee who studied the issue estimated the number of Jewish, Jewish victims at 5.7 million. This was based on population statistics. Here is the exact breakdown country by country. Germany, 195,000. Austria, 53,000. Czechoslovakia, 255,000. Denmark, 1,500. France, 140,000. Belgium, 57,000. Luxembourg, 3,000. Norway, 1,000. Netherlands, 120,000. Italy, 20,000, Yugoslavia, 64,000, Greece, 64,000, Bulgaria, 5,000, Romania, 530,000, Hungary, 200,000, Poland, 3,271,000, the Soviet Union, 1,050,000. <clears> Total number of Jews killed, an estimate, 5,721,500. This estimate was arrived at using population statistics, and not by adding the number of casualties at each camp. The SS kept rather accurate records, and many of the documents survived, reinforced by eyewitness accounts. Some estimates are lower, some are higher, but this is the magnitude in question. In summary, revisionists often claim correctly that the burden of proof and is available in libraries around the world. The burden has been met many, many times over. You've just seen a brief presentation of some of the highlights of that immense body of proof. Much more is readily available. <clears throat> to even argue that the Holocaust never happened is ludicrous. To claim straight-faced that none of this proof even exists is beyond ludicrous, and it is a clear example of revisionist dishonesty.